In this video, I'd like to talk you through the installation that I've just made to my motorhome for solar generator and solar panels. So this isn't your standard installation of solar that normally people would have to their motorhomes. But my requirement was a little bit different and with a little bit of thought, I think I've actually achieved something possibly as good as or maybe even better than the average install of, of solar. So let's have a look at what I did. So here's the motorhome, nice clear roof as you can see, not much on there. The normal solar install would look like this. Solar panels, a charge controller, battery, and then an inverter. And the inverter gives you mains power out. So basically the solar panels take the sun's energy and through the charge controller, give the battery charge, which stores the charge and then puts it out through the inverter at mains voltage. So I've already got one of these, an EcoFlow, and if you don't know what they are, don't worry. I will put you a link at the top and also in the description of a series of videos that I've done of the EcoFlow. So anyway, I have this in the motorhome instead of having a separate battery and having a charge controller and having an inverter. And this to me forms the big part of the electrics for my motorhome. So this is what I'm hoping to achieve. A couple of panels going into the EcoFlow, which has got a built-in charge controller, a built-in inverter, and also a built-in battery. I started off by ordering off Amazon one of these Renergy 100 watt solar panels, which I've used before, and I know that they are really, really good. I also ordered off Amazon one of these mounting kits, and I then set about attaching the mounting kits with screws, stainless steel uh, self-tappers onto the panel. I then took a trip down to Screwfix and bought a, a bag of bits, stuff that I would need going along through the installation. I'd kind of planned it out in my mind how it was going to work. So yeah, I knew basically what I would need. So I bought some cable, I bought a junction box, I bought some Sikaflex and some trunking. I also bought some of these connectors. These are called MC4 connectors and they're kind of the standard solar waterproof connector and they'll go on the end of the cable. So basically here I am fitting the connectors on the cable and then these connectors will plug into the standard connectors on the solar panel. So here I am just tidying up the cabling and also threading the cable through the junction box which will be made watertight when I fit it with Sikaflex onto the roof. It's important to use Sikaflex, it's waterproof and it's also a great adhesive. Here you can see the panel um, installed on the roof and at this stage I was only intending on installing one panel. I also bought this little cable off eBay. I only needed the yellow part of the cable. This plugs into the Ecoflex. So basically all I've done is chopped off the other end and then joined it with exactly the same cable that I got from Screwfix. So here's that junction box that I bought from Screwfix and the idea is that this will join the cables from the panels to the output cable to the Ecoflex. So this is me after the end of the first day. I was uh, indecisive about whether to go for two panels but I decided to do it in the end so I carried on and ordered the rest of the bits which unfortunately there was a bit of a delay so I didn't manage to get it done in, in one day. It took about three days. And here you can see me just putting the Sikaflex on the junction box. Uh, these glands are waterproof as well. So literally, all you do is you put the Sikaflex down and then just stick it down with loads of pressure. And that's it. It will sit there quite happily forever and a day. I use isopropyl alcohol for a lot of different things, uh, cleaning surfaces before you stick things down. And you can see a bottle of it there on the roof. It just gets all the grease and, and everything off it that could possibly contaminate it and stop it from sticking. Uh, a good top tip here is for cleaning um, the Sikaflex or even Mastic, use wet wipes. Uh, for some reason, I'm not using them here, but I do use them later on. So wet wipes really do a good job of cleaning it off. Here you can see me cleaning it again with the IPA um, before I stick the trunking down. The trunking is self-adhesive and as long as you create a really good key, i.e. with the IPA, um, then the trunking will stay there forever as well. There's no reason why it will ever move. So this is me just doing a little bit of preparation work before the bits arrive so I can actually fix solar panel number two to the roof. 
Here's the junction box inside the cupboard. As you can see, we've got both sets of cables from the panels and also the output cable going off to the EcoFlex. And with the lid on tucked away, it's nice and neat. You would, uh, you would pay no attention to that. So finally, Amazon turned up with the bits that I'd been waiting for and I was able to get back up on the roof and start to fix panel number two. So this is me applying the Sikaflex to the, uh, the mounts. It's not particularly an easy job to do on your own, but it's not impossible as you can see. So again, going around all six um, fixings and applying a, a liberal amount of Sikaflex. You, you know, if you put too much on, it will just splurge out and then you can wipe it off. If you don't put enough on, then you probably will regret it forever. Sikaflex is uh, not the greatest thing to get on your hands. It's not easy to get off, but that's the reason why we use it. I've already marked the roof out as well, um, so I know exactly where the panel needs to sit, just so that it looks the same as the, uh, the one on the other side. I really rate these panels. I think they are actually very, very good. Obviously, um, the, the truth will come out as I go on and use it through the season. But so far, you know, I've been really impressed. I have seen um, somewhere in excess of 95 watts. And taking into account their 100 watt panel, that's not bad, actually. The, uh, the Ecoflex that I've got will actually take a maximum of 200 watts so, uh, and, and if it goes over, it will just trip. So there you are. That's the actual installation onto the roof. All but a little bit of tidying up. Need to put the capping back on that bit of trunking. Uh, the reason why I'm using trunking is just to keep the cables neat. Plus also, the cable isn't UV stable. So, um, you know, over a period of time, that cable could break down. So there we go, there's the trunking going on. So there's the fitted second panel. And I think you'll agree, it looks quite neat really. Um, all seems to be parallel and the junction box is fine. There's the EcoFlow plugged in and it's now charging from uh, the panels. And I'll, I'll show it you on a good day in actual fact. But uh, at the moment it's very, very overcast and actually the sun has just gone down. Now, what I'm about to show you is quite contentious and I know it will raise a few eyebrows. But at the end of the day, it suits my purposes. Um, I know what I'm doing and I accept the risks. But my advice to you is absolutely do not do this unless you completely and 100% understand the risks that you're running. So I created this little cable and I can imagine eyebrows being raised at the moment and people getting ready to type uh, a warning and, and uh, emails to me and whatever. I know what I'm doing. At the end of the day, I accept the risks and I'm very, very careful. Um, it enables me to plug the EcoFlow into uh, a main socket in the van and basically electrify the um, the electrical circuits, it's all protected because the EcoFlow has got uh, an output protection. Um, obviously, you don't do this lightly. And in fact, I would strongly urge anybody not to do this. Um, I'm fortunate in the way that only I will be using the van. Um, and I absolutely know um, the risks that I'm running. So there you go. This enables me to run various things such as the charging circuits and also the fridge uh, and also the microwave. So I don't have to physically plug those devices into the EcoFlow. I can just plug the EcoFlow into the, the ring main and then the ring main becomes electrified. Obviously, you need to ensure every single time that you don't leave this plugged in. Um, because if you plug this in and you then plug it into the shore power, then you're going to end up with a surprise. But as I say, uh, I'm a big boy and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take the, the risk for the benefits. 
So there you go, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have got any comments, then feel free, go ahead and uh, put those down below. Please don't give me any abuse about the last thing that I showed. Um, anyway, if you have liked it, don't forget to click that like button. And if you'd like to subscribe and watch other videos like this, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. So thanks very much for your time. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye for now.